Welcome back. Uh, in this video, we're going to see a couple of applications of the concepts we've been seeing up to this point, uh, in particular applications of congruences and two applications that have to do with cryptography. The first application I'm going to talk about is, in fact, a cryptographic method called a shift cipher, also called Caesar ciphers because they were used by Julius Caesar. So uh, the first step in a cipher is translate letters or words into some sort of symbol uh, or transform those uh, words into something else. But the first thing we're going to do here is translate uh, numbers to uh, or translate letters to numbers. So this is the simple uh, way we're doing it. A is going to be corresponding to zero, B is going to be one, C is going to be two, etc. And uh, for example, the word hello translates to H is the number seven, E is the number four, L is the number 11, there's two 11s, and then 14, which 14 corresponds to the, le to the letter O. And then how are we going to uh, encrypt this and uh, just uh, um, use congruences at the same time? Well, the Caesar cipher is simply a shift. So what you would do is uh, shift all these numbers uh, that way so that um, A now corresponds to E, B corresponds to F, C corresponds to G, something like that. So here's what's happening and how we do it with congruences. Uh, here I have again my conversion of letters to numbers and the way our cipher is going to uh, work, this is a shift uh, cipher um, by a equals 13 in this case. So uh, the, the shift does the following, uh, take a letter and uh, convert it to one of the numbers. So for example, we're going to start with the letter H converted to the number seven. And uh, you see the numbers are zero through 25. So we are going to convert it to a number modulo 26. Modulo 26, remember that modulo 26, there are exactly 26 classes, congruence classes, the class of zero through 25. So Z mod 26, there is exactly 26 elements, which correspond to these numbers. Uh, so we take H, we take the number seven. Uh, let, me, let me do it maybe um, uh, right here as we go. So I'll take the, the letter H converted to seven modulo uh, 26, and then uh, the shifting happens here. I'm going to shift seven by 13 elements. So seven uh, plus 13 and reduce modulo 26. That is just 20 uh, modulo 26. And then go back to my table and see what is 20. 20 corresponds to the letter U. So U is going to go to, or the uh, number 20 is going to return the letter U. So, for example, now, if I try to encode the word hello, uh, hello would go to, uh, first of all, it goes to the numbers. Um, I translate each one of the letters. So it's 7, 4, 11, 11, and 14. And now uh, convert each one of those modulo 26. Uh, so add 13 and convert modulo 26 or reduce modulo 26. 7 plus 13, it gives me 20. 4 plus uh, 13, it gives me 17. Uh, 11 plus 13, it gives me 24. 24 and uh, 14 plus 13, that is 27. So uh, let me write that here, that uh, 14 plus 13, that is 27, which is one modulo 26. So I actually uh, write one for my 14. And now I can translate two letters. So 20, where's 20? 20 corresponds to the letter U. So I get uh, U. Uh, 17 corresponds to the letter R. 24 will correspond to the letter Y and another Y and one corresponds to the letter B. So uh, my word now is translated to U, R, Y, Y, B. And that is my encoding. Uh, the decryption method is actually subtracting 13 
So if I want to go back, what I would do is if I want to translate, if I know that this is encoded with a shift cipher by 13, then what I would do is uh, convert my letter to a number, uh, let's say uh, M, and then um, go back uh, to this one by subtracting 13 modulo 26, and then uh, convert that to another letter using the same um, correspondence between letters and numbers. Uh, and that would give me uh, the, a way to decrypt my message and return uh, the original message of hello. Okay. Uh, of course, this is not a very secure method because as you can see, there is, oops, uh, that's what I meant, I meant the, with the laser, uh, there is a double Y. And um, when that happens, uh, that's an indication that there is actually, um, that may be an indication for someone to try and trying to crack this code that there is a repetition in a letter in there and um, you might have a guess of what letter might be repeated there and then that might allow uh, that evil person to uh, undo the whole code and crack what you're trying to do. Uh, there is a better ways of doing this. There are, uh, we will uh, learn about other methods that are that improve on this so that at every letter you're using a different shift cipher and that's uh, called a Virginia uh, cipher and um, it's a slightly better or an improvement of this method. Okay, uh, what, uh, the second application that I want to talk about is the fast power algorithm. So this is not so uh, uh, an explicitly uh, um, real application, but it will be very useful in, uh, uh, in other the cryptographic applications. So this is used and cryptographic methods such as RSA that you might have heard of, or uh, Diffie-Hellman, uh, uh, Diffie-Hellman key exchange, um, et cetera, and is used to compute large powers in Zmod MZ. So it's used to compute uh, large powers in Z mod M Z. Remember that this is uh, this is has only a finitely many elements: zero, uh, one, two, up to m minus one modulo m. So it has exactly m elements. And what we're trying to solve is the problem of how to do like two to the two hundred modulo m quickly. Uh, so here's an example of how this is used. Uh, for example, um, what are the uh, first uh, two digits? I'll explain in a moment what I mean by that. Of uh, three to the 123rd power. Um, what I mean by that, so if I have the number, um, for example, seven, two, three, four, one, uh, I mean these two digits. So I mean the units digit and uh, tens digit. That's what I mean. I want to know what are the first two digits starting from the units. And um, another note is that uh, how do you know what are the first two digits of a number, uh, especially of a number that large, well, you actually just have to reduce your number modulo 100. So um, if you have a number, so for example, uh, well, that number 72341, um, what this means is that this is uh, seven times 10 to the four uh, plus two times uh, 10 to the three plus three times 10 to the two plus four times 10 plus one. This is what our decimal expansion means is exactly this. So if you reduce modulo 100, uh, you see that this is zero modulo 100, this is zero modulo 100, and this is zero modulo 100. So this whole number is 
congruent to 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 40 plus 1. So it is congruent to 41 modulo 100. Um, the upshot of this is that uh, the first two digits of n, the first uh, two digits of a number n are given by a modulo 100, the least non-negative residue of a, whoops, of a number, the number was n. Um, uh, so, this happened. Uh, so, the very first two digits of a number n are given by the least non-negative residue of n modulo 100. So, uh, to solve this problem, what we are actually trying to figure out is what is 3 to the 123 modulo 100. So, let's see if we can figure out uh, how to do that. So, here's how the fast powering algorithm works. Uh, it works as follows. So, um, again, I'm trying to compute 3 to the 123 modulo 100. And what I'm going to do is actually um, use the um, the binary expansion of 1, 2, 3 of 123 to compute that power. Uh, so I'm just going to compute repeated powers of 3, repeated squares of 3, and that's going to help me to compute the number at the end. So for now, let's just compute uh, what is uh, 3 modulo 100. That's just 3. How much is 3 squared? That is just 9 modulo 100. Um, what is 3? Um, to the fourth power. Now, three to the fourth power is uh, three squared squared. That will be nine squared, and that is 81 modulo 100. I still don't have to do any reductions. Um, now, what is three to the eight? So three to the eight is three to the four to the two. So that is 81 squared. And now I can uh, use some uh, modular arithmetic to help me out. Um, I can do, for example, this is minus 19 squared because 81 is congruent to 19 or 81 is congruent to minus 19. So this is the same as 19 squared and that helps because it's a smaller number. And this is uh, 361 if you know some of your squares and 361 modulo 100, it's just 61 modulo 100. Okay, similarly, I can compute 3 to the 16. 3 to the 16 is uh, going to be 3 to the 8 to the squared. 3 is square, 3 to the 8, I know it's 61. So I just have to compute 61 squared. And 61 squared is 3,721. And that is 21 modulo 100. Okay, now I go for 3 to the 32. That will be 3 to the 16, 21 squared. And now I'm already using the properties and the very um, powerful properties of congruences. 3 to the 32 is already pretty big, but I just have to compute 21 squared. 21 squared is just 441, and that's 41 modulo 100. And 3 to the 64 is uh, 41 squared. Uh, which is 81 modulo 100. Okay, so um, why am I doing all this? When I want to actually, what I want to compute is this one. Um, well, I'm getting closer, but that doesn't seem to be converging to my what I actually want, my answer. So let me uh, let me lasso all of this and bring it to the next page with me. Okay, let's uh, put it up here. That's information that we're going to use. All right, so now how does this help me? What, what it helps me is that um, 123 
is if I write it in binary expansion, if, if I write it as a sum of powers of two, it is actually 64 plus 32 plus 16 plus eight plus two plus one. Okay. And therefore, this implies that three to the 123 is uh, using the rules of exponents. This is, this is three to the 64 times three to the 32 times three to the 16 times three to the eight times three to the two times three. Okay. Um, but I know how to simplify that using congruences because I know how much is three to the 64. That's 81. Uh, three to the 32, that's 41. Three to the 16, that's 21. Three to the eight is 61. Three is squared is nine and three is three. And uh, now it's a lot simpler than raising three to the 123, which would probably not even fit in my computer or my calculator. I can now uh, simplify, just multiply a couple of these at a time. This is three, three, two, one times uh, one, two, eight, one times 27. And then if you uh, reduce modulo 100, this is just 21 times 81 times 27. And if you multiply these three numbers together, these are easy enough to multiply. This is uh, 45, uh, 927, which is congruent to 27 modulo 100. So that's my answer. And the first two digits of uh, 3123, 3 to the 123 is who knows, but it ends up in 27. There you go. And that is the fast power, uh, the fast powering algorithm. That's how it works. Uh, you compute enough powers of your number so that uh, you can later use the binary expansion of your exponent to translate your high power into powers that you've already computed and then use congruences to simplify that calculation. Uh, alternatively, there's a shortcut along the way that you could have used. So, um, here's an alternative. Um, so, alternatively, uh, you could have realized that when I'm um, raising powers of three, uh, not with that pen. I, uh, I could have done three. Now this is acting a weird. Um, okay, I could have done uh, three, uh, then nine, then three to the four. That's eighty-one. Uh, three to the sixteen. That is twenty-one, and um, it turns out that three to the twenty is uh, 3 to the 16 times 3 to the 4, that is 81 times 21, that is 1701, uh, so it is congruent to 1 modulo 100. Um, that is interesting because then what I can do, whenever you find one of these properties, some power of 3 that actually gives you 1 modulo 100, then you can do the following. You can do instead, you can do long division of 123 by 20. This is 20 times six plus three and use that instead of the binary expansion of 123 to write 303 uh, to the 123 as three to the 20 times six plus three. So this is three to the 20 to the sixth power times three to the three but 3 to the 20 we know is 1 and uh, 1 to the 6 is just 1 times 27 so this has to be 27 uh, modulo 100 voila uh, so now how do you realize this piece here well that is um that is something that we are going to talk about a little bit um later 
um, it has something to do with primitive roots on the order of an element. Um, so it will, we will touch on this uh, in a couple of the lectures that are coming up. So I'll stop here and next time we're going to talk about uh, finite fields in general and um, Fermat's little theorem and Euler's theorem perhaps. Okay, I'll stop here.